This is Jackie with All Access, and I'm here with Danger Kids uh, at New Jersey's Warp Tour. How are you guys doing so far today? We are doing excellent. Yeah. It's amazing. No complaints here. Awesome day. I was going to say, you've got, you've got a decent tan, no, bi no bad burns. Life is good. Life yeah. is good. I mean, yeah. Warp Tour does it well. For yes. it, 20th anniversary, I'm sure it's a really smooth... By now, Kevin's got it down, right? Oh, it's, we were just talking about that. You're saying how impressive it is that, you know, the crews, every, you know, every morning they're here before we even wake up and the stages are ready to go. And then they're here after we leave and they tear down. They do the same thing every day. It's really impressive. I, I, I secretly want to, like, watch the whole thing. Yeah. But I also want to watch the show. I'm sure they have, like, this method, you know, because it looks like everyone's just running everywhere. But everything gets done, you know, and it's incredible. The whole, the whole team is just unbelievable that puts this whole thing on. And like I said, 20 years, it's a, it's a smooth machine by now. What were you guys up to 20 years ago? 20 years ago, I was probably playing in dirt or something. Yeah, yeah. I was probably doing the same thing, with little motorcycles in the dirt behind my house. Yeah. So. But what was the first show you've ever played? Played? Ooh. First show ever. Um, my first show, I was in a pop punk band when I was like 15, I think. And we played this place called The Cellar. I think you played there. Yeah. Um, yeah, we played like a couple Weezer covers, I think, and like, I don't know. Yeah. My first show was at this place in Ohio that's not there anymore called The Gathering Grounds. And uh, I was in this band called Words as Weapons, and we thought we were super cool until we played, and then we were awful. But it was a good time. I think I learned a lot that day, you know? So it was fun. What's the first show you ever attended? We both attended. Did we have the uh, same first show? It wasn't my first, I don't think. Well, no, it might have been. It might have been my first real concert. I was at a White Snake concert when I was like five or something. I don't really remember it. Um, so technically, that's my first one. But uh, we both went to um, a corn concert in Dayton, Ohio, at the Nutter Center before we knew each other. And it was, uh, I forget what the tour was I called. I remember it because Corn set the world record for the loudest rock show in the world at, yeah, at that show yeah. that we were at. And we didn't know each other. We just later found out that we were both at the same concert. So that was my first concert. Yeah. It was a good one. And times have changed yeah. since yeah. then. Um, now when you play, what comes to mind when you look out and you see a bunch of telephone screens looking back at you? Oh, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's, it's definitely different. Um, I don't know. It's awesome, though. I it's yeah. me too much. I think um, one time I saw. Ah, I wish I could give credit to this band. I can't remember who it was. And uh, there was always one song in their set. They'd make. They'd ask the crowd to all put away their phones, not because it annoyed them, because they were like, you know, don't live too much through the screen and worry about reliving it later. Like, let's just enjoy what we're doing right here, right now, just for this one song. And people would do it, and I thought that was kind of cool too. And it was like a little bit of a, you know, reference or throwback to the way things were. I think and. I don't think one is better than the other, but I think that was cool, you know, to kind of get the best of both worlds. And I'm sure somebody kept their phone on anyways, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think it was a cool idea. Some bands, like if they're playing a ballad, will have everyone hold up their phone oh, screens yeah. instead of I, instead yeah. of lighters. Yeah, the first time I saw that, I think it was like Taking Back Sunday or yeah. something at, at uh, Riverbend where they have Warped Tour in Cincinnati. Yes. And uh, I was pretty young, and they, you know, they had everyone do that, and I was like, oh my God, and everyone was holding up their so Nokias cool. that like lit up blue and stuff. Yeah. yeah. But it was really, it was like really cool. Yeah, it looked like a sea of stars or something. It's really cool. I thought, it, I thought that was kind of a neat idea. That's probably back when cell phones, like you said, were bricks, and yeah, they weren't really that prevalent. Snake, and that was yeah. about it. Yeah. They never just, uh, if you didn't, if you had the stock faceplate though, you were a joke. You had to get the crazy LED antennas that like lit up. Oh, Did you yeah, ever see that? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We're no, too no much it's fun with this. Yeah. <laughs> Crap, that's fine with me. <laughs> um, so, uh, what's your opinion of um, some bands charge fans for meet and greets and signings and VIP things? What's your yeah. opinion about that? Well, our signing, we usually have, we have like a flat $1,000 fee. And uh, that's just to be entered in a contest to maybe get a signing. I'm just kidding. No, we, we sign for hours every day for free. Um, and, you know, we actually give out all our posters for free as well. And um, we're out right now, actually. I think they come like tomorrow or something. Yeah. So today we're just signing you know, CDs and skin and backpacks and whatever people can bring. But yeah, we've, ne we've, you know, I think we've all, we've signed quite a bit, I think, maybe. Yeah. We've signed, uh, the other day this guy was like, what haven't you signed? And I was like, I've never signed someone's ass. So I like, I signed his ass. And it was a dude, but it was cool. And uh, yeah, I don't know. We, um, 
we just sign. We'll sign for hours every day. I can't imagine. I don't know. We've never charged or thought about it or anything. Yeah, I can't really say anything to that. We've never charged, but um, I do think it's cooler when bands charge, but they give you a unique experience, you know. Yeah. And not everyone has to pay, you know. Um, but like it when is they cool. Give you your own show, like the private yeah, like, show ones. Those are cool. Yeah. See, I would love that. Like a band that I love, I would pay an extra fifty bucks to go see like. I don't know, like Lincoln Park sit there with like 50 people. Like, that's awesome because yeah. you're going to leave there going, oh, yeah, I saw him with 50 people. Like, you know, that's cool. But I don't know, just for a signing, like an autograph, I don't know. It doesn't interest me. Yeah, we don't, we don't, obviously don't charge. So Half if you see us, fee. if you ever see us out running around Warped Tour, don't be afraid to come up and have us sign something. We, we'd love to. So, What's your opinion of crowdsourcing sites like Indiegogo and Kickstarter? Um, I think it's, I mean, it's, it's still really new to me. We, we've never done anything like that, but I do think it's really interesting. And I think there are a lot of bands that are, are you know, are getting albums crowdsourced. Otherwise, they couldn't put out music. So um, When they go about it the right way, I think it usually comes down to how they handle it. Like, I've seen people crowdsource, like, crowdsource the funding of an album, but then they don't, like, give the album to the people that donate or something. It's like, yeah, that's kind of yeah, weird. I don't know, but that's a rare circumstance. Most people seem to be good people just doing it right and if anything it's just putting you know people that want to maybe help out their favorite band in touch with their favorite band so i think that's cool i, I would agree with that um the the music industry is forever evolving with technology yes. um facebook is charging bands to get the the reach yes. that it would need <laughs> to to sort of spread the word yeah. do you do you sort of just bite the bullet and do it, or do you find other means? We, we, we don't pay for I don't think it's effective. I think Facebook is on the way out. I don't know what's coming in, but I wish MySpace was still around, because MySpace was the, regardless of how corny it got and how many animated sparkling GIFs there were, yeah. it was great for music. You know what I mean? You could go on MySpace, you could type in a band's name, and there's their music. And There's not some weird band page that kind of works on Facebook. I don't know. I, I think I think oh. Rihanna Rihanna got her start on MySpace. Like That's someone found true. her. Like there's definitely a plenty lot of that. artists, yeah. even ones on the tour right now, owe a lot to that. You know, because it was a, it, it worked for music. And right now, I think YouTube is probably the closest thing we have to that. And I do love YouTube, but I don't know anyone who's discovered a new band on Facebook. Like I've never heard of that because you don't yeah. browse. Like it's not, it's not built at least for music. On, it's, yeah. it's, it's, at least with YouTube, they give you like a related video or people can have channels or playlists or like there is a way to discover something, you know, so a visual component with a song is always really catchy. So I do, I love YouTube and that's sort of been like, I always tell people that's the new MySpace to me, but I, yeah, yeah, those days were awesome. Anything oh, that's good for music. MySpace. I thought I thought JT was going to bring it back for us, but I, I, I don't. Uh... He brought Sexy back, but I don't think he could bring MySpace back. I mean, if anyone could, I mean, it, it really should have been Might him. Yeah. <laughs> he brought sex back twice, I think. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a fan, so. Yeah. Fair enough. Good-looking guy. Ladies love him. Yeah. <laughs> um, and fans love bands. Uh, what was your reaction, or, or has there been a reaction to a fan that comes up to you with a Dangerous Kid, either logo or <laughs> lyric awesome. on them? I... I it's really cool that um, it's it's still crazy to me that that we're a band in that position that people will get our logo tattooed. But I think it's more than anything. It's just so cool that not even that we mean much that's that much of that, those people, but like the lyrics mean so much to them. You know, it's really not even about the band. It's like they get lyrics tattooed on them because they're like, I listen to this band Danger Kids and this song like I felt like connected with me and it was ex describing exactly what I went through. And it's just like. You know, you hear it a lot, but music is a way of letting people know they're not alone. You know, we go through the same stuff everyone else goes through. And if we can write a song about that, and someone, you know, regardless of liking the song or not, can take those lyrics and like, wow, someone else did this too, and they're okay. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I think it's really cool. Yeah, I agree. Finding meaning in the lyrics is so cool, because I think we've all had that band that said that thing you needed to hear at just the right time, and it's super cool, you know, whether it was like, you know, a lot of people like to say save your life, maybe even just something that just impacted you or made you think about something a little differently. Uh, you leave there, and it, you kind of carry it with you, you know, and I think that's the same reason why you hear a song, and it like sort of takes you back, and you're like, oh man, I remember that summer when this thing, and yeah, you know, yeah. to, again, it's not about us, but to get that lyrics and that meaning, and to have something we created uh, impact someone else's life, you never think about things like that, you know, you just think about I mean, I think about him and I sitting in my apartment, you know, just like we never think about this, like right now. You know, this is cool. This is cool. This is definitely cool. 
So uh, for all the kids that are sort of walking around through Warp Tour, what's one song on your set that you want to make sure that they hear because it's really representative or it's just fucking cool? I mean, there's, I think we have uh, a couple different songs for a couple different types of people, you know, and different musical interests. interests but um, our one song we usually say is Paper Thin. I feel like it's kind of a really good example of all the different things we do musically in one song. Yeah, and I yeah. think the, the lyrics are really great. They mean something really special to us, and it's... Uh, I don't know, I feel like people can really connect with that song. And uh, as far as fucking cool goes, um, I don't know. Well, I mean, my favorite live is probably, I like playing the last song we play, which is Waking Up. Right now, it's the last song we play. Um, it's super fun live. It's just a fun energy, it has a great message, super fun song, yeah. But, you know, paper thin, like Andy says, probably the core. If we're like, hey, if you've never heard us, you want to know what we sound like, this is a good song, so... We just released a video for that song, too, if anyone wants to check it out on YouTube. Like Paper Thin. Old, yeah. Ten days. Two Something weeks. Like yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up next for Danger Kids after Warp Tour? Um, we're enter entertaining the idea of a couple different tours. We, we, we don't really know. We're, we're trying to, you know, reach out and see what tours we can maybe get on. Um, but aside from that, we're going to continue working on the next album. Um, we never stopped working on it and writing it. Um, we have a few songs in now. Uh, so I'm really excited to go back home and work on that. I'd like to be on tour, too, if I could do both at the same time, you know. But, yeah, so far, so far the album is the only thing we know we're, we're doing right now. Yeah, it's between we need to make a couple decisions on, like, whether we want to try to, you know, do, like, a headlining run or jump on these other tours. But we're very, very focused, a lot of thought and energy on the new album, and it's already really far along, and it's sounding amazing. And so we're getting to that point where we're like, ah, oh, we should just finish it. It's so sweet and stuff. So. It's really exciting. Yeah. So stay tuned for more from Danger Kids. This is Jackie with All Access and In the Key of Change.